All right, we're deep diving into this YCS. We're going to be talking about everything you're going to expect from this top cut that's unfolding. Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. As of filming this, we do not have the top cut, but I can tell you some of the things that we're kind of starting to see unfold with this top cut are undefeated actually out of this event was, yeah, Simon He featuring the power of Minkanko. Um, if you watched the stream, you saw some uh, slow play penalties. I'm not going to deep dive into that too much, but there's always an argument for how much time is allotted for a proper move and continued penalties towards that, but that's an entirely different thing with time penalties. So, yes, Minkanko was your undefeated. Now, um, I believe Joshua Schmidt was playing a Bicesteel Runic Pile, um, from what I've been seeing and uh, hearing about, so uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, I think a lot of people, uh, actually, there's two Runic builds right now that, um, well, one's a lot more vocal than the other, and that actually is, you know, honestly, the Bicesteel build. Um, I do think that a lot more people are going to continue to be kind of taken away by that build because when you look at like the, the runic foundation, you're like, oh, you know, it was all your sprite stuff. It was your for hire, you know, sprite. And that was that was kind of it. Like that was the last real time besides, you know, like the, the occasional pure degenerate build that shows up out here. But like that's that. I right? like there's nothing else too much to it. So the fact that you have this bi-steel version of this deck that tore through, you know, a regional, it's been kind of spinning around here and, you know, becoming more spotlights. We actually saw in the Kong's Cards tournaments also being relatively successful as well. So I think that's all pretty big. And of course, the other subversion we actually saw on feature was the Runic version. And Slipnir getting the chance to bridge this together and actually have it all kind of work together is actually amazing. Uh, now, for a lot of people that do, you know, pop in here and they they look at this stuff and they're like, oh, you know, like, why would, why would you ever want to play, you know, the runic stuff with, you know, the generator stuff? Because they both rely on field spills. Yeah. Yeah, they do. But we saw in the future match a perfect example to just breaking apart that key field of the purely player and just using these generator cards to toggle through and make this really crazy field at the end they also you know if you give a runic deck hand ripping capabilities hi enter Blafnir, how are you and then you know two hand rips make it an f0 uh, it kind of kind of gets a little bit dicey at this point in time so I, you have two extremely different runic decks you know, kind of sitting here at the dinner table right now, catching people by surprise. And it's cool to see that Runic has been re-innovated. I know, once again, terrible average Runic player here talking about, you know, the spinoffs of the deck that he loves. Yeah, who, who cares, all right? It's highlighting and talking about these really cool interactions and the diversity change amongst the meta right now. Also, back on the topic of that, uh, that you know, Minkanko deck, um, one interesting thing out of this weekend, um, we, we've been seeing an uptick in that, uh, that Asa Golem. You know, not not every build's going to be playing the Asa Golem lock. The Asa Golem lock is you hand your opponent a nice little Asa Golem, and, uh, you know, if they, uh, if they can't tribute someone over it, Every standby phase, that's a fresh 2,000 damage, and they can't do anything because of the Asa Golem. So just want to point out that um, the Asa Golem burn has been kind of upticking a little bit. It's, it's not like it's an incredibly new thing at the moment, but the more that you look at competitive play at the moment, the more you look around, it genuinely is very interesting just seeing that little craziness kind of happening out here with this. Um, now, of course, um, you do have Invernoble present at this event. Um, I don't think a lot of people are going to... I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. Invernoble, I always think it's a little bit of a hit or miss. It, it depends on the day. Invernoble, like most decks, needs to see some sort of dice roll to be successful. It can happen. All right, like, whew, trust me, it, you, can, you can see a lot of craziness unfold with that deck. Now... 
come here, come here for a second. If uh, if Tier isn't on your bingo sheet to win this YFCS, what are you doing? Honestly, be be honest with me here. You know, I we we saw in the Simon He feature match how stupid that deck can actually be, and the the fields aren't impossible to out, but that matchup is a primary example as to our good friends, the Millers and the Shufflers, and why people are frustrated with these cards existing in the game at the moment. I'm not going to go too far down the rabbit hole of, you know, what needs to be banned, what needs to, you know, stick around at the moment, but, you know, if, you know, you're looking at a top cut, and yes, this should be incredibly diverse, at least at the top 64, if we ever get the chance to see the full top 64 breakdown, but something that you do need to consider out here for all of this is just, you know, what will the best result be, and I, I do got to give it up to our dear friends over at Tier Elements. I really don't think, like, Rescue Ace is a solid pick. Fire Kings were okay for this event also, but I just think that there's something about how crazy Tier is that just kind of sets the deck above the rest. Oh, and this is a European event. Aha, yes. If you think, for whatever reason, that Rika Sun Avalon doesn't stand a chance out here, boy, oh boy, you're about to be shocked, man. I love the fact that you take a look at these events out of Europe, and you look at Rika Sun Avalon, and you're like, oh, you know, like, you know, it's not doing well in the TCG. <laughs> you know, that's that's North America. That's, that's a different thing out here. All right? When you look at the EU events... Rika Sun Avalon is always there, all right? And I don't know if it's a curse at this point or it's something to be genuinely excited about, but I, I'm i going to put a little sub racehorse at least in the top 16 that we will see Rika Sun Avalon. Beyond that, I don't know if we're going to see too much of it. Um, we'll kind of, we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, there's a lot of wild cards out of this. Um, something wild card that I, I thought we would see a little bit more of has been people have been exploring these uh, barrier statues lately uh, with Gizmak Uka. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's an upcoming tech trend right now. There's a lot of pick your barrier statue. Fire, I think it's fire, water is very sub, and then the light barrier statue I think are the biggest ones people are messing with. I don't know. That was just the trend that I've seen picking up, at least on our TCG side for regionals. Um, and I'm, I don't think it's going to necessarily hold up for the European YCS. If it does, okay. Well, sure, it, it did its thing. But overall, for this YCS, Minkanko went undefeated. Cool. All right. Um, I'm not surprised that the deck is at least at the top cut. All right. A lot of people don't know how to well, didn't technically go undefeated, but close enough. Um, you do get the chance to see Infernoble, uh, the different runic variations challenging the game. And I wonder how many degenerate different tier elements plays that we're going to get the chance to witness out of this weekend. If, if anything, I, I do hope that Konami takes a lot of the notes out of this top cut and goes, hey... This is what we need to hit. All right. I understand that Phantom Nightmare is coming. The Rescue Ace cards are going to cr go crazier. I understand that we're going to see another level of power creep here. I get that. All right. Nobody's, you know, challenging that. It's just, please look at Tear. Look at how this deck is. Let's watch it all. Hold hands. Dance around Vice Starfrost. And let's watch the deck win the event. If for whatever reason, Tier is not, you know, in the top cut and we see something crazy, like Flanderies cacawing around out here, good. I'm, I'm fine with that. I want to see that change. I want to see how that meta is going to go. And once again, I mean, anything is possible. All right, this is one of the most diverse formats we've ever actually had in the game. So let's see where it goes. So what you guys think is going to win today? Please, comment down below to what you guys think. See your beautiful faces back here in day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. Hey!
Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.